Today we want to look at a few things which don't cost that much, but which have a huge impact on your astrophotography success, right after the trailer. Hey, this is View Into Space, I'm Sasha from Switzerland, so grüezi miteinander and thanks for watching my channel. So let's start right away with number one, and that's this thing here, a cover to actually cover your rig. And this is very well known. This is a Telegismo 365. So it's presumed to be the best protection you can have for your rig, that you can leave it without any worry 365 days a year outside. And it's rather sturdy. And it has actually in here some reflective material so that also UV light is not getting through. Now there are a few cons about this cover. First of all, it costs a lot. It's over $300. But the other issue is I had now two of them and both of them leaked. And with one, I actually had water in my controller of my scope afterwards. So personally, while I know a lot of people who swear that they're great, they're reliable, I do not trust them anymore when it comes to water. So what did I do? What I bought in addition is this here. And this is actually for a barbecue grill uh, hood. Advantage number one, it costs around 40 bucks at Amazon. Advantage number two, it's really watertight. What are the cons? It's black, which means if it's like today about 90 degrees outside, it's just frying your rig. <laughs> so my strategy at the moment, I use my Gizmo 365 on days like this when there's no risk for rain and it's very hot. As soon as there's a risk for thunderstorms or for rain, I put this here in addition on top of it, just to be sure. But just to know, there is something cheaper than the Gizmo 365, and from my point of view, also more water resistant. With that, let's come to number two. And you might see it here that I have something really strange here as a counterweight. And you will also see it right here as a counterbalance on one side. So what's that? I had to find something rather lightweight where I could really buy a few grams actually add or take away. And what I found also on Amazon are these here. They're actually made counterweights for tires. So you can take each of these elements off and they have an adhesive at the back. So I just actually roll them up and they hold and I could, by five grams, I could actually ensure that I have exactly the right amount of weight to be fully balanced. I will also put a link down below. You can find that on Amazon in each and every form. So let's go with number three, a tail rat. Now you might know that and you might wonder, why do I even mention that? Now, not with this rig. This I just do with plate solving. But with the Celestron CPC 800, I had these standard search scopes on top of it. And they're great as long as it's not too dark. And if you look for one of the, the main stars to, to align, you can easily find them. Now, as soon as it gets really dark, what you see very clear with the naked eye, that one star is so much brighter than the other, it's not very well visible anymore in these search scopes and suddenly have a lot of stars and you go like, which is now the one that I'm actually looking for? And given that they also have a rather narrow field, it sometimes is actually even difficult to find them. And honestly said, a Telrad, even it's just a piece of plastic, but, and it costs only about 50 bucks, but I find it so much convenient of finding one of these bright stars to align. So for me, this was a lifesaver. Next topic, cable management. There's so much cable going back and forth on, the, on a rig. And as you might see, I have it quite nicely managed. And there's actually also on Amazon, a set which has all these different things included. And these sets cost between 15 and $25. And you have a ton of stuff to organize your rig so that it looks as good as it can and also that you don't have the risk of entanglement. By the way, thanks to Urban Astro where I actually got this tip. The next one, while I'm still on the rig, 
is this here, a filter wheel. Now please complete the sentence for me. A filter wheel you use when, and if you now complete it with when you shoot mono, you're wrong. I still have a one-shot collar cam around there, and I'm so happy about a filter wheel. Why? Because before I had a filter drawer, and in at least two cases, the drawer fell to the floor, including the filter, and thank God, the filter stayed unbroken. But it could have been destroyed. So that's one issue that if, you, if it's dark, you don't know exactly where to loosen it up, it's just a risk. There's also the risk every time you take the filter out and in, that some dust comes in there, that you do something stupid and you touch it with your hands. And as soon as you have a filter wheel, this is all gone. No more dust, no more risk of them breaking, no more risk of touching them. You put it in once and all your worries are gone. Now you might say, actually such a filter wheel is something very expensive. Now it doesn't have to be, they're actually manual filter wheels, which just cost around 80 bucks. And if you need a filter drawer for about three filters, it costs you at least the same amount of money. Because with one shot collar, usually you don't need to have an electric one. You just choose a filter for the object you're shooting and you're good. So last but not least, I have this here for you. An electronic digital caliper is it called in English. I would also not know how to call it really in German, but what it actually does is it gives you a way to precisely measure everything. And there's so many things to measure, especially when we talk about back focus. So how much distance we have back here, when we talk about how big the distance is here, when we want to know the distance between holes to screw something on, or even how actually big these holes are to screw something in, and so on and so on. There's a million things where you actually need to know the precise distance, and with something like this, it's so easy, and I bought this for, I think, $20, and it really helps you a lot. So I hope you saw something that was interesting to you. If you know any other little helpers like these, please leave it in the description below, and see you next time, and clear skies. Thank you.